Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and quick, what's the biggest thing you can think of? A planet? A star? A galaxy? Well, I hate to break it to you, but Alexander Koshlinsky probably has you beat. Although it's pretty difficult to prove. You see, a few years ago, during his research at NASA, he discovered several clusters of galaxies were moving toward the edge of our observable universe at up to 1,000 kilometers per second. And that's really... weird. As far as we know, the only thing this can mean is that there's something unfathomably massive right outside of our universe. And it's producing so much gravity that it's pulling entire galaxies in with ease. We call it the Dark Flow. And if this megastructure really exists, we've never encountered anything this big before. Well, unless you cheated and counted our entire universe as one thing. Maybe. There's a theory known as eternal inflation that suggests after the Big Bang, a large portion of space-time never stopped inflating. But some small bubbles cropped up that did, resulting in a sea of isolated bubble universes. One of which we live in. And if this theory is true, then there's at least a chance that the Dark Flow is caused by another universe pushing up against ours. It's time to question how unique our universe is. If you play a lot of video games, watch a lot of sci-fi, or read a lot of comic books, you probably know what I'm talking about. The idea that our reality is just one of many is as old as storytelling itself. This universe is home to Superman. You know, truth, justice, the American way. In this universe, Superman is a communist. In this universe, Superman is a woman. In this universe, Superman is a vampire. Infinite realities, all different, but all equally true. How is that possible? And more importantly, is it possible for us too? Is there a world out there where I'm a woman and you're a vampire? Well, maybe, but we aren't sure. There are a number of theories, like the one I mentioned before, that suggest we could live in a multiverse, but none of them have had a chance to be conclusively tested. We just don't have any proof one way or another. Fortunately, companies like DC have taken the time to illustrate at least one possibility for us. Ladies and gentlemen, a map of the DC multiverse. For those of you unfamiliar with it, this is the closest thing we have to an all-encompassing, official bird's-eye view of everything DC Comics has ever published in continuity. And I say the closest thing we have because it is missing a few things, but we'll get to that later. The more important revelation here is that, I kid you not, this map is overflowing with scientific concepts that provide a basic blueprint for how our multiverse might really work. But it's really a lot to take in at once, so let's start smaller. In fact, let's start as small as we can get. Quick question, what's my hand made of? Well, skin, right? Skin cells. Okay, but what are those? made of. Atoms. And those are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Alright, but what are those made of? I don't know, quarks? Tiny subatomic particles? What are those made of? What's the tiniest thing in the universe? The most basic thing anything can be? Well, some time ago, scientists suggested the answer might be... Strings. Tiny, one-dimensional strings of energy. So small that if the smallest atom were the size of our solar system, strings would be about the size of an average tree. And these strings are important to understanding the multiverse, especially the DC multiverse, because they vibrate. And if they exist, they all have slightly different vibrational patterns, which on a larger scale helps them create different things. This string is part of an electron. This string is part of a photon, etc. And all of this was proposed in the appropriately named Super String Theory. A theory which has been confirmed in the DC Universe, but is still being researched here. And most physicists agree that there are good reasons to back this theory. It unifies the four fundamental forces of the universe. It resolves the conflict between Einstein's general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. But the math that allows the strings to vibrate properly says they have to be moving through at least nine spatial dimensions. This is a problem. As far as we can see, there are only three spatial dimensions. Length, width, and depth. 
And well, yes, there's one dimension of time, but it's not a spatial dimension. So where are all the other dimensions hiding? DC has an answer for us. You see, on their map, we're right here. All those little bubbles are universes, and they're floating inside a bigger bubble. Inside a bigger bubble, inside a bigger bubble, inside a bigger bubble. This is shockingly consistent with something called M-theory, a basic revision of string theory that adds another dimension and suggests the reason we can only move in three of them is because we're stuck on a membrane. Consider it like a giant, flat version of the strings we discussed earlier. These membranes, or brains, can exist in any dimension, vibrating at their own frequency with the smaller one-dimensional strings tied down to them. So theoretically, our universe could be tied down to a three-dimensional brain vibrating through fourth-dimensional space on a fourth-dimensional brain vibrating through fifth-dimensional space on a fifth-dimensional brain, and at this point things have probably gotten a little confusing. It's really hard to imagine something with more than three dimensions, and it's even harder to illustrate it. After all, we've only ever experienced three of them. So think of it like this. Pretend like this three-dimensional bread is some higher dimensional space. Some people call it hyperspace, some call it the bulk, but that's not important right now. From this perspective, a three-dimensional brain would be an impossibly thin, two-dimensional slice of bread. And our universe would be tied down to that slice by strings. If every slice is another three-dimensional brain with another three-dimensional universe on it, there could be an unfathomable number of universes out there vibrating through some higher dimension. This is how DC explains it. 52 brain universes vibrating in the same space, all at different frequencies within the all-encompassing bulk, otherwise known as bleed space. And this isn't a one-off explanation either, folks. DC has been teaching comic book readers about string theory for decades. In their first ever cross-universe story, the Flash from Earth-1 travels to Earth-2 by vibrating his body out of one universe and into the other. The Flash is vibrating so intensely that his strings are becoming out of sync with the brain they're usually attached to, and attaching to a brain that matches his frequency better. If there really is infinite hyperspace out there and infinite possibilities for brains, then it only logically leads to infinite universes. Some that are almost exactly like our own. A concept DC touched on in 1961 and has never really let go of. There are countless examples of characters traveling to countless universes, almost always connected with vibrations or frequencies. They're talking about strings! One of my favorite examples has to be Superman's confrontation with Darkseid at the end of Final Crisis. At this point in the story, the multiverse is crumbling, and Superman is stranded on the final corner of existence, building a machine that can fix all of it. Unfortunately, he's met by Darkseid's true, disembodied form who wants to end Superman for good and close the book on the multiverse forever. But Superman just responds with this. The worlds of the multiverse vibrate together, Darkseid, and make this sound. Like an orchestra. Everything's just vibrations, really. And counter-vibrations that cancel them out. Darkseid always hated music. Superman used string theory to annihilate Darkseid from existence. He actually calculated the vibrations of Darkseid's strings and cancelled them out. But it doesn't stop there. DC's map of the multiverse shows higher dimensions too. See, if all the three-dimensional universes are on three-dimensional brains vibrating in this higher dimensional bulk, a quick zoom out seems to reveal the bulk itself is an even higher dimensional brain vibrating even faster in an even higher dimensional space, called the Sphere of the Gods. I tried figuring out what dimension the Sphere of the Gods is, but it wasn't entirely clear. All I know for sure is that it's higher up than the bulk, which heavily implies there are even more bulks with even more multiverses vibrating through the Sphere of the Gods that just aren't shown on the map. In fact, some of the Bulk's companion brains have even shown to be multiverses themselves. Let's take a look at them. The Underworld is the Land of No Return, Realm of Hades, Anwen, Pluto, Orishkigal, and the Phantom Zone Kryptonians used to send their prisoners to. It's a barren, null area of immaterial torture and a lack of physical existence. Apocalypse is the home of the true Darkseid, a multiversal god with infinite emanations that exist in all worlds. He leads a fearsome army across all realities in an attempt to acquire the anti-life equation and drain every sentient being of its free will. Hell is the multiversal realm of ultimate dread, torment, and fear, 
separated an infinite distance from all holiness, but still stuck in the same dimension. Demons, jinns, enemies of God, and haters of humanity all end up trapped in this pit, waiting. Nightmare is the dark side of the metaphysical, home of the Boogeyman, the Corinthian, Haunt of Witches, Yath Hounds, and all the eldritch horrors given matter by mind. This realm is frequented by death, doing her job diligently across universes. When the last living thing dies, she'll put the chairs on the tables, turn out the lights, and lock the multiverse behind her when she leaves. Skyland is where the Pantheons live. The high worlds of Asgard and Olympus, the divine bureaucracies of China, and the gods of Oceania, Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Celts, you name it. Each powerful deity has a peak to watch over his or her people in the vibrating universes. New Genesis is the proud home of the new gods and the young forever people. Led by High Father and the wisdom of the Source, this race of multiversal deities opposes Darkseid in an eternal war of good and evil across all realities. Heaven is the throne of God with an infinite multiverse of afterlives tailored for each of his individual creations. It hosts the Silver City, the Word of the Voice, and a strange connection to the God Wave and all powerful Source. The Spectre, Zoriel, and an uncountable host of angels reside here, surrounded by love and possibly limitless power. Then there's Dream, the brighter side of the metaphysical that houses every positive that can possibly be imagined by the beings below it. The Dream King Morpheus resides in this infinite universe with his brothers and sisters, each embodiments of endless concepts. Here you can find the Courts of Fairy, the Twelve Houses of Gymworld, Oberon, Titania, Amethyst, Santa Claus, and the Easter Bunny. Eight infinite realms of gods surrounded by infinite bulks. But... If we zoom out even further, we find even this bulk looks like it's attached to an even higher brain in higher dimensional space with limbo squeezed between the two. This is the Monitor Sphere, a realm beyond matter and memory that should theoretically observe infinite brains with infinite variations of realms that house infinities. This is where the Monitor Race keeps watch over all the ongoings of existence. It comfortably seats them in the 10th dimension, allowing string theory to work properly, but beyond even that, there's... something. We don't know what. Theoretically, this should be the 11th dimension? Housing infinite variations of everything that has existed, will exist, or can exist? But the DC map won't allow us to see it. Instead, it's closed off by what appears to be a nigh-impassable pan-dimensional barrier called the Source Wall a mysterious structure in the DC Megaverse that only a select few people have ever managed to overcome due to its nearly indestructible nature. So high you can't get over it, so low you can't get under it, so wide you can't get around it, the map states it's the limit to even thought. Beyond lies only Monitor Mind, the Source, and the Unknowable, the final dimension of everything. I, of course, have my own theories about what's behind the Source Wall, but that's another discussion for another episode. The real question is, does our multiverse look like this? Well, probably not. But physicists are researching string theory every day, and it could be closer than we think. It already seems to have a few concepts pretty well illustrated. And if it seems humbling to think we could just be one speck on a brain vibrating among infinite brains on infinite bulks wedged between at least eight other spatial dimensions, Remember that would also mean you're made of strings. All vibrating in just the right pattern to make you... you. An important part of the multiversal orchestra that wouldn't quite sound the same without you. No matter who's playing it or why, it might just be the best song in existence. So thanks for sticking around. Hey everyone, Tyler again. Thanks for checking out this video about string theory and the DC multiverse. If you like this video, be sure to let me know and I'll have a Marvel version coming out as soon as possible. And if you really like this video, why not check out some of my other ones? You might like them too. In fact, if you hit that subscribe button, you can join me and all my imaginary friends every time we release new content. I really owe a lot to all of you for just how fast we've grown and how well all of my videos have done up until now. So let's keep it going. You're of course free to follow me on Facebook or Twitter if that's your thing. But above all else, be sure to have a fantastic day and I hope we can see you again next time. Later.